Hello everyone, this is Teo. In today's video, I'm going to give you the full review of the Huawei Mate Pad Pro tablet from the perspective of an artist. This video is going to be long because it's going to be very detailed. If you want to save time, you can actually check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below. The content here on the text review is the same as the video review. If there are any updates to my review i will put all the updates on the text review i purchased this tablet here in singapore for 899 dollars and it came bundled with the huawei m pencil and the magnetic keyboard case both of which are otherwise sold separately this tablet has 8 gigs of ram and 256 gigs of storage the design looks really beautiful this is a 10.8 inch lcd display that supports a resolution of 2560 by 1600 so the aspect ratio is 16 by 10 and the pixel density it's around 280 ppi so there is a lot of pixels everything looks very sharp and detailed so all the text the icons the user interface they are very sharp i do not notice pixelation Huawei says that this display supports up to 16.7 million colors, which is to say that this is an sRGB display and it supports DCI-P3 white color gamut. When I first powered on the tablet, I was really impressed by the colors. They look really nice and very vibrant. And the brightness, right now it's running at 50 to 60%. This is a very bright display. Bezels on the Huawei are thinner compared to the iPad Pro and Samsung Tab S6. The bezels are so thin that when I am holding the tablet, I have to make a conscious effort not to have my finger touch the display so as not to interfere when I am drawing. The screen to body ratio is around 90%, so this is a very immersive display. The corners are rounded off very nicely. The power button is at the top volume buttons on the side and there's this punch hole camera at the top right. Thickness is around 8mm, it's quite a thin tablet. And the camera bump here, this is very obvious because it protrudes out by quite a bit. And there are four speakers, one at each corner of the tablet. Audio quality is fantastic. The matte textured surface on the back, it's really nice to hold. This is not glass or metal. And this camera here, it's 30 megapixel f1.8. The M pencil can be attached magnetically to this side, and this will also charge the stylus. Battery life is rated to be 10 hours. If you keep the pencil charged here, battery life is never going to be a problem. And if this is the first time you are attaching the stylus to the tablet, it will ask you to open up Bluetooth so that you can pair the tablet to the stylus pairing process is very straightforward. Now the overall design it really looks good. The build quality is very solid. The glass here um, has the typical glass reflection. This tablet is available in Wi-Fi and LTE. The card slot is here. You can use external expandable storage but this format here, this is not micro SD. This is Huawei's proprietary NM format which stands for nano memory. This is designed for nano SIM size and this micro SD card design obviously cannot fit here. Nobody likes proprietary formats, but thankfully storage is not an issue here because this tablet it has 256 gigs of storage. The Huawei M Pencil is sold separately for US $75. This design may look like it's inspired by the Apple Pencil, but there are slight differences. The body is actually hexagonal with the edges rounded off. The battery is built in and not removable. The matte surface has a nice texture to it and there is this slight shimmering look. The length of this stylus is 16 centimeters and the weight is 14 grams which is lighter compared to the Apple Pencil which is 20 grams. So because it's lighter it doesn't feel as dense compared to the Apple Pencil, but overall the build quality is solid and it feels really good when held in hand. The tip is user replaceable. You just have to unscrew it like this to detach it. 
I did a check online and replacement tips are around US $10 for one. So this is two times more expensive compared to Apple Pencil tips. And you can see there's this metal thing that's attached to the plastic tip. I'm not sure how long the tip will last, how durable it is because I have only used this M pencil for about a week, but it's plastic on glass, so it should last for many months. One side of this hexagonal design is actually concave. This is to match the curved outside of the tablet. The M pencil supports slightly over 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, and pressure sensitivity works well. Initial activation force is low, but not as low compared to the Samsung S Pen and the Apple Pencil. So you do have to press down slightly to get those thin lines. If the pen tip is touching the surface, but you're not pressing down, you're not going to get any noise. But with the Apple Pencil, as long as the pen tip is touching the surface without any pressure, you can still get lines, but not with the Huawei M Pencil. And there is tilt sensitivity as well. So you can tilt the M pencil at an angle to get those broad strokes. And there is tilt and pressure working together. This is the slow diagonal line test to test for wobble and to test for the accuracy of the stylus. So I notice slight wobble. And that is definitely not from my hand because I don't see the pen tip moving in a wobbly manner. When I draw fast and quick, I can get a straighter line. And when I hold the pen as vertically as I can, there is less wobble. And now the jitter that you see, it's actually really from my hand. And notice there's one straight dot there. How much wobble and jitter there is will also depend on the apps that you use. So some apps may apply software correction to make the lines smoother. Some will not. So in the case for Wacom Bamboo Paper that I'm using right here, it doesn't apply any sort of correction. So you really get to see the line performance as it is. Palm rejection actually works quite well. So while drawing this quick sketch here, I place my palm on the display and draw and there weren't any straight strokes. But earlier on, while I tested the diagonal lines, you can see there's one straight dot here. Straight dots like that are actually quite rare. Anyway, how effective palm rejection can be will also depend on the app that you use. So for example, for this particular app, I can still draw with my finger. That means if I place my palm on the display, there is a chance that it may create straight strokes. Some apps have strict palm rejection, which means they only detect pen input such as concepts. I can draw with the pen. But if I were to draw with my finger, you can see it doesn't produce any lines. This tablet actually has a laminated display, but there is still a gap between the pen tip and the line that it creates. I'm not sure why that's so. Maybe it's because of the thickness of the glass. I cannot confirm. I consider myself to be someone who applies medium pressure when writing and drawing. So when I draw on this tablet, I can sort of see ripple effects on the LCD. I'm not sure if my camera can capture that. Let's test the input lag or the latency. Pay attention to the gap between the line and the pen tip. So there is input lag. This is quite similar to what I see on the Samsung Tab S6 Lite and the S6 and also on the iPads. The only tablet that has very minimal input lag is the iPad Pro, which is significantly more expensive. Input lag will also depend on the app that you use. So input lag with Medibank Paint Pro, it is so obvious. Input lag may or may not be an issue depending on what you are drawing. So if you are drawing as per normal with normal speed and you don't draw like quick long sweeping lines, 
input lag is not really that obvious. You may still see the lag, but it's not the irritating type of lag, you know, the laggy lag. For drawing, uh, it didn't affect me at all. My overall drawing experience is very positive, very satisfactory. The performance of this tablet is very smooth, it's very snappy. I guess the 8 gigs of RAM, it does help. The processor that's used here is the Kirin 990, which is as powerful or as fast compared to the Snapdragon 855 that's used in the Samsung Tab S6. Pressure and tilt sensitivity worked really well with this app concepts. And I can apply a lot of textures and I can move around the canvas and it's still very smooth. So performance is really snappy, which makes for a very fluid drawing experience. If you are using the same app that you are using on Android here on the Huawei, the drawing experience is the same because it's essentially the same app. The only thing that's going to be different will be the pen. So with Android, I usually draw on the Samsung Tab S6. The most important thing, I guess, to take note is this pen overall, it's still quite accurate. So pressure works well. There is also tilt. I don't really get nasty surprises. Since the pen tip is plastic, it has the same plastic gliding on glass type of smoothness. I guess if you want to buy a matte screen protector, you can do so. When tapping on the display with the M pencil, there is slight movement. There is actually some spring-like mechanism inside, so the tip will move very slightly. It's not a negative experience. I just thought I would mention it. Since I'm also using this app on Android, I feel really comfortable using it here on the Huawei tablet as well. All the shortcuts, they still work and performance is very fluid. I did not notice many glitches or if any glitches at all. Thankfully, everything still works properly. This is a bright display, so even if you are working in a bright environment, the colors and contrast will still look good. Capacity for the built-in battery is 7025 mAh, which translates to 789 hours of use. Battery life will of course depend on the app that you are using and the brightness. If the auto brightness goes up, battery life will come down, obviously. Here's another sketch that I drew with concepts. I want to point your attention to these diagonal lines here. So earlier on, I said that the wobble and jitter of diagonal lines will depend on the apps that you use. Here, while drawing these diagonal lines, I did not notice any jitter at all. See the lines there? These are also diagonal lines, and this one as well. Here. And for the cars here, no problems with diagonal lines for this particular app concepts. Notice the camera cutout here that overlays onto the user interface element. You're going to see this very often because the apps, they don't design with camera cutouts like this in mind. By the way, the touch still works even though the camera is there. Thankfully, you can rotate the tablet to move the camera cutout out of the way. So now it's at the top right. I usually have it at the bottom right here. The most important thing you need to know about getting a Huawei device at the time of this review is the operating system that's here is the Huawei EMUI, which is based on Android, but it's a variant of Android that does not support the Google Play Store. So in its place, there is the Huawei App Gallery, which is the Huawei App Store, but 
the variety of apps that's available here it's sort of like a subset of the huge variety you can get with the google play store there's a lack of variety and quality of drawing apps from the huawei app gallery this is the same situation that google play store was in in the early days when competing with the apple app store so many of the android drawing apps that i use are not available here on huawei so one example is infinite painter there's this button here that you can click on to add basically to tell huawei to ask the infinite painter developers to quickly port over their apps but um, that is just a wish list so whether or not the developers will want to port their apps over to huawei app store will really depend on the demand and autodesk sketchbook it's also not available the only popular android drawing apps currently available on huawei are ebs paint x midibank paint and concepts Concepts is one of my favorite drawing apps right now and when I saw this available, oh, I was so ecstatic. Thank goodness there's this app here. Thank goodness there's at least one good drawing app. Even with the apps that are ported over, there can be still issues. Let me show you some that I discovered. So let's open EB's Paint X. Says here it wouldn't run with Google Play services. By the way, Google Play services is the software that allows certain apps to run. Google Play Store is the place where you find the apps. Not to worry, you can click OK and the app will still run. So let me go into the gallery and click Edit. Now, one thing I noticed is um, this particular app, it's ad supported. And if you have purchased EB's Paint X on Android, you may of course want to restore your purchases. So when you click here to restore purchase rights, oops, there's no permission for in-app purchase because there is no Google Play services. And even if you want to buy the app to remove the ads or to get the full features, um, you won't be able to do so because there is no way you can go through with the transaction. So this looks like a 100% direct port over from Android without reprogramming the app to allow for transactions through the Huawei App Store. You can still use this though with ads. Midibank Paint is also ad supported, but thankfully I was still able to sign into my Midibank account which gives me access to all the files, all the drawings that I have saved online, all the drawings that I have drawn on other Android devices using Midibank. So I can assess them here. So this is still quite all right. For concepts, this app currently doesn't have cloud syncing functionality. So if you want to transfer your concepts files from other devices here, you need to do it manually using third-party cloud services or use the USB drive. So these are three drawings that I drew here in Concepts. Let me just open one. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna click here at the Pro. I actually purchased some of the tools and features for this app on my Samsung tablet and because there is no Google Play services, this app wasn't able to detect my past purchases. So I actually have to pay money again to buy the same features and tools. Thing here is at least you can still buy the tools unlike on EB's Paint X where the transaction wouldn't even go through. All right, to conclude, in terms of design, the build quality, the physical aspect of the Huawei Mate Pad Pro, this easily scores 5 out of 5 stars. If you are going to buy this tablet for digital drawing, you have to take into account there is no Google Play Store, which means you are going to have a limited selection of quality drawing apps. And not just that, if you have been using Android apps that you have purchased, you may or may not be able to restore those purchases here. The future of the Huawei App Store, in my opinion at this time, it's a bit uncertain. More specifically, I'm not sure if the Android developers will port 
all their apps over to the Huawei App Store. So my general advice has always been if you are going to buy a computer or tablet, uh, buy for the software that you are going to use. Do some research to see if the software is available here on the Huawei App Store first before you purchase the device. Don't buy it based on the promise that the apps will arrive later because sometimes they will never come over. Having said that, you can actually buy this tablet with Google Play Store pre-installed from resellers on AliExpress.com and the price for those tablets, they are not very different from the tablet without Google Play Store. So if you really need Google Play Store, do buy it with it pre-installed because uh, personally for me, I have tried to install Google Play Store on this tablet myself. I've tried for hours and I have failed. So it's not a very straightforward installation process. In terms of pricing, at the time of this review, this is less than US $550. I think the lowest price I saw was $515. So for that price, you get a pretty good processor. Everything feels very fluid, even if you open a lot of tabs. 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and the LCD display, it's really nice. So for that amount of money, I think it's kind of worth it but um, do get it with the Google Play Store. Now, if you add the Huawei M Pencil, the price may go up to close to 600 US dollar, which is not very far away from the $649 of the Samsung Tab S6. So yeah, you can consider either getting this or the Samsung tablet. Just make sure you have Google Play Store. If you do not have Google Play Store, well, let me show you what you can expect so you will not have access to all the Google apps like Calendar, Maps, Keep, YouTube. You can still access the web version of those apps, just that the functionality is going to be a bit different. Um, let me show you an example. So for example, with um, Facebook and Instagram, the web version of Instagram doesn't allow you to upload photos directly. So you're going to find missing features here and there. It's a discovery process and you wouldn't know whether or not you really need those features until you realize that you really need them. If you happen to be using Huawei phones and tablets currently, do share with me and others your experience in the comment section below. All right, uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below as well. See you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, by the way, this is Tiffany, my two-year-old kid.